Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Path Radio Spotlight. I am your host, Guido Prino, and with me on the show is Peter Argyropoulos. I knew Argyropoulos, I close. Ah. But, if, but if you were in Greece, they say Argyropoulos. So you See, I can do that better. Argyropoulos. Why can I do that better? Adiopoulos. That's how it's supposed to be said. <laughs> That's how it's supposed to be said. We, we muck it up in English. Man, I, like this is natural. Argyropoulos, like, you know. Anyways, I'm Guido, right? Who You are the lead vocals and rhythm guitars, and Adam Curry, who's the bassist, both of the Billboard Active Rock charting Los Angeles band, Sons of Silver. Welcome to the show, Peter and Adam. How are you guys doing? We're great. Thanks for having us. Yeah, thank you. No, thank you. It's always thank you. You guys, uh, you know, make the show, man. I just, I'm the talking head here, and uh, hopefully you're going to give us uh, some insights for the fans, and everybody wants to hear your music. And uh, yeah, so after I massacred your last name there, Peter. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm just waiting. You know, just waiting. I was for the waiting. Room. You're gonna have to. You're gonna have to remind me towards the end, just so I get it right again. But um, it, do you also go by Peter RG? Not really. No, I mean it, the Pete RG name came about when uh, it, it's the it was a pre the predecessor to this band when when I was uh, just you know getting some new songs out there and and we. We, the band formed as a backing band to me, and and I didn't want to go out with Peter Argyropoulos just because it's a bit of a mouthful. And uh, when I was in when I was growing up, my nickname was always RG, especially on like you know sports teams, baseball, football, and the like. So it's hey RG, hey RG, and so that's that's how that started. But frankly, I never really liked it a whole lot, and uh, I was really I was very happy to uh, move on, not not just uh, musically, but also from that name. We are nixing the RG, Adam. What do you call him? uh peter oh. <laughs> <laughs> or or hey bro hey dude what's um, up buddy i was just gonna say it's always fun like when i call him uh, uh using my my phone and the uh the voice recognition like siri will come up how she pronounces his name and it's funny because they'll change it like i, I told him I go, hey they've changed how they pronounce your name like every like once or twice a year they'll they'll redo their pronunciations that's funny. Yeah, I'd, I'd be curious to hear hear what it is. I think last it's Argyropolis is the last oh, one. Oh, you know what? I have heard that because I've heard, I've heard, yeah. Yeah, when, yeah, but it, but it changes. It's weird. They, they mix it yeah. up. Well, Brina yeah. is Brina. So, yeah. My, you know, so our keyboardist, my wife. Yeah. How does it say her name? Brina? Brina. And yeah. I, and they're supposed to be, I've tried where you can actually speak the name in it and it corrects itself or it's supposed to yeah. correct itself with Siri. But it never seems to work, so I've given up now. Actually, in fact, I've added Mama uh, to that profile because I tried one time just for fun. I said, you know, please Siri, please call Mama, and it says, "Who is Mama? Is it in your? Is she in your contacts list?" And you know, added <clears throat> added Mama. So now our son will grab my phone and go, "Call Mama." I'm like, "Whoa, whoa, slow down! You're driving her crazy. You just called her seven times." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I think Siri doesn't really like. Uh, doesn't say my name very well, Guido. She, it, they had a key really? time. yeah yeah they do some funky things with guido but prino is a whole other different story as well so one, uh, one of my cousin-in-laws has shares the same last name last name prino oh seriously yeah where are they from uh here out in la oh i was gonna say if it was new york i have relatives in new york <laughs> well you're you're related to to, in, to some degree you know Somehow, could be right six or seventh cousins right yeah are they hey, you, are, you go back far enough we're all related somewhere right exactly yeah. <laughs> well i was gonna say the, the whole prino name you know it dates back to spain and and there's a sicily connection so anyways offline stuff i guess uh family everywhere Ta name speaking of names sons of silver um your name is integrated into the band uh tell the listeners how this uh this came to be wait it's my last name argyropolis means son of silver uh or descendant of silver uh, Argyros means silver. It's, I think it's the ancient Greek word for silver. And uh, Poulos means son of. And uh, it, it was re recommended actually by my, my brother uh, when we were searching for a backup band name for, for Pete RG. We were thinking Pete RG and you know, XYZ. Yeah. And, uh, and so that was, that was sort of thrown about. And, and then it was around that time that we decided to uh, just you know, do away with Pete RG and, and consolidate into one name and, and we we settled on on uh, sons of silver and uh it was it was uh, you know it's fun it's it's it has it's nice when your name actually means something to you to you it's, it's, as opposed to like plant on the wall you know that could be a band name I, that would be a strange band name but you know what i'm saying and uh <laughs> i'm sure it's been done 
Probably. I'm, I'm, and I'm saying that because I'm, I'm looking behind the screen here and I see a plant hanging from the wall. Uh, so, but nonetheless, that's, that's how we came about. And it's, it feels good. At least it feels good for me. I don't know how, about you know, everyone else, but who, who cares about them? Well, you, you know what? I connected with it and here, here's why. And, uh, being, and we were talking culture, right? Being Italian and, and, you know, listening to my dad and stuff. Um, the whole notion of son of, uh, was a very uh, uh, you know popular thing when we were told stories about how they grew up, and they'd say, "Oh yeah, um, son of Giuseppe, he did yeah. this, and son of so and so, he did this." Everybody was a son of somebody, right? So, it, it was, but that's the way that they referred to in the in in our culture, right? In our European same, culture, same for us. That so, um, when I saw Sons of Silver at first, I was like, "I wonder if, right? I wonder yeah. if." Right, because I I did this thing here for a while. My dad's name is Pietro, so this, in translation, Peter, son of yeah. Peter. Peter, my dad's name is Peter. Right? So I did this son of Peter, and then and then people were like, son of Peter, like that sounds too much like son of Sam. I'm like, no, this is not. <laughs> <Yeah>. about, <laughs> I'm like, this is not about serial killers here, man. <laughs> like this is, you know. So, anyways, again, uh, went off the rails really quick there. No, no, <laughs> it's cool. It's just it's Frank. My my dad's off the boat Greek. And, oh. uh, and I really only grew up with my Greek family, although my mom's Irish American and I, I speak, you know, reasonable Greek. I've spent a lot of time there and it's the same, especially when, when you yeah. go to the villages, let's say, you know, this, oh, they'll refer to the son of, you know, like, oh, Yosto Peter, right. Yosto, Yosto Dimitris, <laughs> things like that. And, uh, you know, and that's just, it's just natural. And as we all know, Sicilians are really just descendants of Greeks. So you guys okay. are. <laughs> uh, I had to get. I, I was just waiting for that moment. That's Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Funny though how the mafia ended up in Sicily, though I don't understand. So, um, <laughs> look, is you mentioned uh, band names and Adam? You know, like you're you're in other bands as well, and you've uh, you know grown up around the you know the evolution of bands, etc. Is picking a band name a contentious thing? Like you know, somebody comes to you and says, "We're gonna go with this." No. Yes. Like, is that a, has there been any uh, resistance in the past or, you know, is that a contentious thing when you guys do that or? I, I don't know if there's really, it's contentious. It's just that I think that every band struggles until you find something that everyone kind of goes, okay, that's cool. That works. You know, and you, you kind of find that there's one that gets thrown out and there's, there's no resistance to it. So that's the name. Like when Sons of Silver came up, we were just like, oh yeah, that's cool. That works. You know what I mean? We, we talked about a few other things and they just don't float. And then you put that one away because nobody likes it. <laughs> yeah. It's, it, I guess it rolls off the tongue, makes you feel good. It's like, yeah, all right. We're not so gonna it it made hard. sense. Yeah. It's got a cool sound. It's, you can do the SOS initials. And then also it's got meaning with your last name. It just, it all, you know what I mean? Just something about it felt like it vibed right. See, I yeah. was going to ask about, you mentioned the SOS, right? And Peter, I was going to say, I, I didn't want to say SOS because I was like, oh, I don't want to offend anybody, right? Because sometimes you don't want to abbreviate it or maybe SOS means something else if I say it that way. Right. Uh, have you worked that in at all lately or or will you? or? Yeah, we do. We, we work it in on socials, things like that. Um, not as much publicly, but uh, with behind the scenes, we definitely do. And, and again, or I should I say, we, we don't use it publicly as much when we talk about it, but there's no resistance yeah. to it. And I'm sure as time goes on, people will use it more because you know, I've caught fans referring referring to us as SOS, at least in, in writing. And uh, definitely, you know, when we're dealing with business, it gets used all the time. So no, I, I, I think, you know, uh, when the time's right, we'll, we'll have a really, some really cool SOS merch. Um, yeah. So um, I'm looking forward to, you know, like a tattoo of some kind, SOS tattoo or something, you know, something funky. I, I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm fully down. We'll, we'll pay for the first 10 that people oh, want. <laughs> there you go. But they need <laughs> Actually, to make uh, better yet, we'll do the first ten. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, don't, uh, I don't think you want my hand doing it. <laughs> no, that's the best part of it. <laughs> that it looks was terrible. It was done by Peter from the band. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, exactly. That's right. There, yeah, I mean, there could be some nostalgia to that at some point, right? So. Yeah, I, I didn't want him to put it on my forehead, but you know, <laughs> yeah, right. I passed out one night and I woke up with this. Damn it. Exactly. <laughs> Backstage pass. Um, what, what uh, I said you guys are from LA. What makes Sons of Silver an LA band? We're all from LA. <laughs> well, we all live here, yeah. yeah. That's about it. It's where Resident. we meet. Residents. Yeah. 
Yeah, we're all we're all SoCal residents. We all live actually pretty cl relatively close by. We're all within four, 45 minutes. Probably Adam and I have the longest stretch. You know, if if there's no traffic, well, it's Cameron 30 too, minutes. Yeah. Yeah. If there's if there's traffic, it's it's an hour. Yeah, yeah but 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 it's L.A. So just going like a mile away is a 45 minute drive. So true, See, true. You have to you have to live and, and people who, who don't live and I'm not trying to offend anybody here. If you don't live in a in a place like L.A. or like us in Toronto here, right, I'm north of Toronto mm. and people say, well, it's it's we live this far away or it takes us this long to get here unless there's traffic. And there's the yes. qualifier yeah. unless there's traffic. Yeah. And, you know, like I, we, I have a stretch here where 10 kilometers takes me an hour and a half oh, and, yeah. and an hour yeah. and a half in Northern Ontario, where I'm originally from, I, I go through 40 cities or 40 towns, right? Like, right. like we're hauling. So yeah, it depends. It, it's that qualifier. It depends on traffic. Right? Well, really, so, so and also you don't measure things in distance. You measure them in time. Exactly. It, that's what I was going to say. When you're in a city, you don't talk about, about miles or kilometers or whatever. You talk about time. That's it. And in, in the northern parts, we don't talk about time. We talk about distance in yeah. the south here in these in the bigger cities. It's all yep. it's all based time because that's where the value is. Right. It's our value. Because yeah, unless you're walking distances, it, it doesn't matter. It's right. not relative. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. guys, talking about time and value, uh, I, I want to jump into your music. You had a couple of, uh, you know, recent notable EPs, Doomsday Noises in 2020, Ordinary Sex Appeal in 2022. Doomsday Noises achieves uh, three spots on the Billboard Active Rock charts. You end up doing this while most of the world is sitting at home, um, you know, locked down or whatever, whatever we called it. What motivated you guys during that time to put these things out? Do you want to tackle that one, Adam? Sure. Well, I mean, Doomsday was done kind of, it was done before the pandemic. And that's the thing is a lot of people, when they heard that, they're like, oh, you wrote the, all these songs about what's going on in the world. And we're like, no, we did that a year ago. We did that a year before this. So we actually started to tour some of that. Um, and then the pandemic hit and we got shut down. So uh, everything after that was kind of like, well, look, we really can't tour. So let's throw together another EP. We had the songs pretty much mostly written. So let's, let's put in the hard work. We're not doing anything. Let's get this EP out. We did that, and then uh, we started working on new material because it still wasn't a good time for us to get out and tour. Yeah. And uh, we just kept writing, and we ended up with a whole album this time, which is what's coming out next will be a full-length album, which we haven't done. So it was really just, you know, we were kind of stuck, and rather than, you know, sit around and, you know, watch TV for three <laughs> years, we decided to get productive and, and do some work. I watched and Twitter. That <laughs> helps. And eat. I was going to say, sorry to hear that. And eat. <laughs> watch TV, watch Twitter, and eat. Yes, um, exactly. So, um, do you guys, and so other bands I've talked to, it's like um, not everybody had access to a studio. You guys were just building your stuff, sharing tracks, doing that sort of thing. Is that? We, we have our own studio. Yeah, we're very lucky in that regard. Oh, yeah, sweet. We, we, we're, really, we're lucky. I've been in the studio, studio business for a while, quite a while. And uh, we're fortunate to have a really nice, very nice studio uh, nearby, um, and uh, it's where we can all congregate. It's our home, and we can we can open it to the public when we want. But it's basically it's our studio, and uh, so we just would hang out there and, and get things done and send tracks out for mixing and uh, share ideas with each other. And then when necessary, we we go to a rehearsal studio to really you know rock out. Um, but we we're we're very fortunate in that we can cut top-notch tracks at our own place yeah and, and not just for the for the recording part but also for the writing because yeah the way yeah. band works is we write all of us in a room together and we kick around ideas till we like something and we refine it so if if we had to pay you know for the hourly time on a studio we probably wouldn't do it as much but knowing that we can go there and just hey we got the day let's be relaxed about it let's kick around some ideas and have fun and you don't feel a clock ticking Yes. Yeah. And even I would say go further and say that even if the budget was there, <clears throat> excuse me, it, it, it's just the setup and tear down this play. We leave everything as it is. Our, all our gear there, the, the drums, bass, Adam's bass and amp and his, his basses and the sounds. You know, we have a couple sound profiles that we can instantly swap between you, you go down the line. So we just come in and pick up where we left off each time. And, and we can make really good uh, reference uh, recordings that sometimes have, you know, if, if they don't make the final cut pieces of them will. Um, and uh, it just, 
just makes the process a lot easier uh, and, and, and a lot more fun because then you're not caught up in, in the technical stuff, you know, all the time. Yeah, it, that's a big part of it. You know, you mentioned the the setup and the tear down and and then you kind of get your vibe, right? Like you're you're set up, you're comfortable, you go in, um, you know, and there's just a couple of dynamics there, right? Like you had the benefit of being able to do that. And like I said, I've talked to bands that were like, oh, yeah, we, we'd, we'd cut a track here and we'd share it. And there's this whole other dynamic of people trying to to collaborate right in an yeah. environment that it was really hard to collaborate in Did, were you guys uh you know was there was there one motivated guy like that just said let's go let's go let's go or was it just sort of uh hey man we're hanging out together this is us let's just do this uh it, you guys knew what you were going to do and sort of thing and yeah yeah more all- that. i mean i mean P- peter and breener are in the studio more than anyone and of course once we get the basics done kevin will come around so the three of them will spend more time in there um, finishing off the songs but I mean when it comes time to get together we, we just all know okay today's the day we're going in and and we all show up and we all we're all looking forward to get getting something good out of it because one of the fortunate things we have is is we we don't have a lack of songs like when we get together and start working on things we almost always crank out songs I mean th- there was one day in particular I remember we were tracking uh, a couple of years ago and we were trying to get a take on a song and in between the takes, we'd mess around with things. We actually wrote the the main framework for three other songs that made uh, that we finished and we released. So you know, it, it's we're very lucky that it comes together relatively quickly for us. So it's yeah. fun to work. And, and I'll say, as I'll add that we're we're all very motivated. We're all very disciplined and motivated. Um, and there's no, you know, yeah, okay. Am I the, the the leader of the band? I'm the leader in the sense I'm I'm overseeing more of the business activities, but it's simply because only it's it's a job really only for one person. But I'm constantly like Adam and I talk, if not daily, multiple times a day, you know, about business and things like that. What do you think of this? What do you think of that? You know, it, from artwork to label relations to shows, whatever it is. So um, everyone's very much involved. And, and that and that's that makes it not only um, easier to work, you know, to get stuff done, but but it also makes it a lot more fun because, you know, frankly, if you're out there doing it alone, you know, for any one of us, it feels it's isolating and you it's mm-hmm. disheartening if you can feel disappointed. And likewise, if you're having to even if you're five people and four of them are chugging along, but you have one one link in the chain that's not as motivated, that's it's mm-hmm. kind of a bummer we're all very motivated we enjoy each other um and uh it's it's great yeah we're we're lucky we have a good dynamic because not only being motivated to show up to work but also knowing that um you're still fully a part of it but you know what i'm not needed here at this moment because you know if you end up with everybody in the control room going over every overdub and everything it just becomes too much so you know it's like we know what what our main purposes each of us individually and we come in and we deliver that 100 percent. and then if it's not your time for that then you step back so like like i say once we get our basics done i kind of disappear a little bit because i know peter's working on lyrics and you know and kevin's working on guitar overdubs and brina's engineering and they're adding some keys i don't need to be there for that there's enough stuff going on so yeah. it's, it's a having that dynamic is really good because you if you have everybody who wants to be hands on all the time, you're going to make each other crazy too. kind of like everybody working from home. Right. <laughs> There's a, you know, the artistic balance that you guys are are talking about the ingredient you guys are giving. I, I got to tell you this, you're giving away some, um, you know, really good business advice here, not just to people in the music industry, by the way, like this yeah. is, this is good corporate business advice that you guys are giving folks in terms of the dynamics of how people work together. Yeah. Well, this is not, this is not a free call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you you got to buy some music here, man. You got to right. buy some music and support the group. Well, um, I, you know, if I may circle back for one second, I'll yeah. add this as well. Adam was talking about, you know, when we, for instance, he was specifically referring to when we go into overdub phases. So we, we get our basics, we work up a song, spend a lot of time together doing it. We, we go into a, our studio, track all the basics, you know, bass, drums, guitars, some keyboards, and then often we'll go back and redo guitar stuff just to fine tune it. Um, but but what he didn't mention is, for instance, we did a show in Vegas last week, an industry showcase, and uh, and he took care of all of that, and then some. And he's just calling me, you know, when when 
when things are unraveling, or I should say starting <laughs> to go awry, as they always do at shows, especially, you know, industry related shows, yeah. uh, he's just call, calming me down and saying, just be here. It's all going to be fine at the end. You just make sure you're here on time, you know, and your voice is feeling good <laughs> and, and, you know, talks me down that that. So he takes care of all that. And literally I just show up, play the show, you know, uh, be the lead singer, rah, yeah, whatever, <laughs> talking to press and, and that's it. And I take off and he cleans up my mess. <laughs> that's good. That The dynamics, right? The dynamics are there. Uh, you know, I was going to ask another question about this and, and you, Adam, you talked about the, the writing process a bit. Um, and I'm always in awe. Like I, when, when I hear that the artists get together in one room and, and you start, you know, playing with the lyrics and the song and, I always wonder, like, you know, I always write and I think, geez, I, I come up with an idea. I must have the greatest idea in the world because I came up with it. Right. And so when you get the personalities in the room, how do you find that give and take? Like, what is the I, I've, I've never found the like the 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 real essence of what is the give and take? When do you know? Yeah. When do you go? You know what? It's time for me to give. On this. It, it, it It is. I feel very fortunate because in, in my career and doing things, I've managed to have that kind of working environment with several different groups. And once you have it one time, you don't want it any other way. So it's, but it's very difficult because you can, if you have a group of people and, and so there's a thing with, with talent and musicianship, you have to have a certain level of that with everybody. But if the personalities don't, don't jive right, it's not going to work. And if you have somebody that's either, not contributing or is too heavy handed, it can throw the balance off. So we're, we've been very fortunate where we'll work on something and everyone knows, okay, that's a cool idea. And then we really don't say anything to each other. We all kind of police our own thing. Like what can we bring to this idea? And it's really like a hands-on thing. Everyone is looking at what can I do to this idea to further it? How do I um, expand this? How do I support this? And we all do that individually without talking about it. But when somebody does something that's really cool, the rest of the group is listening and recognizes and goes, okay, that's cool. Do don't, don't forget that we we've recorded that. We got to right. remember that. So we, 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 um, I think that the key factor though, to get to your question is you, you, you have to have people in the room that check their egos at the door. Cause it's not about you. It's about what can you come out of the room with and it's not about you, because if you put in all of your ideas and what you come out of the room with isn't good, then what's the point, right? You got you want to walk out with something you're all happy with and confident with when you're done. Yeah. And yeah, it's trusting it's, the other people. It's, it's, it's trusting that everyone else also, is going to do good stuff. It's trust. It, it, there's for, first in our case, there's a level of musicianship and experience that's that's a prerequisite at this point. And then then also there's the uh, comfort level with each other in the sense that it's a relationship and you're you're really uh exposing yourself for instance uh when our our new drummer our mark sletsky joined the band a year and a half ago uh he was uh, referred to as by john fields who who uh, producer uh, mixer extraordinaire who um mixed our our second ep um ordinary sex appeal anyway Nonetheless, Mark came in as as a bit of a, um, a session with a, basically with a long track record as a session player, having been in in a couple bands, a band Splendor, but he for a number of years now was you know a devoted session player. Didn't want to be in a band, and we invited him down to pretend to be in a band and, and <laughs> blossom from there. But the point is, is that we had to when we we had to basically tell him that he could be comfortable trying whatever he wanted being whomever he wanted to be just yeah. just be real be honest and be real not only with us in speaking but also in the music and if he likes something you know say i like this if he didn't like something give it a chance and if he still didn't like it well maybe make a suggestion to and you know fix it or to uh, take things in a different path right. and and once we crack that nut with him which took a couple days really to start opening it up. We basically, we really had to sit down. Uh, then uh, we, he really blossomed and we blossomed uh, even more than we had before that. And, and, and that's, so that's part of the process too. It's a willingness to basically be naked and know that you're going to crash and burn. And I can say for myself, like when we're jamming, we're throwing all throwing out ideas. And sometimes you, we look like Adam and I'll look at each other and be like, Oh, that was a good one, you know, as in not so great, but it's funny. <laughs> 
you know and that likewise with lyrics i'll i'll hear some lyric we'll hear lyrics go down and, and everyone will be like oh wait play play that one back again as we're listening back that was really good and they'll put up their iphones and like i gotta save that one that was a really glamorous moment so <laughs> if, if you can't if you can't do that you're not going to be you're not going to be successful, at least in, in the efforts, in the way in which we work for the most part. Um, so, so, and then that requires, then the last point is you have to be, you, you're, we're really good friends. We're all really good friends and we all care about each other a lot, at least right now. I can't say about tomorrow, but uh, no, we, we really do. And that, that makes the process that much more easy as well as rewarding. The, the element of openness and, and trust and all those elements that I really appreciate that you guys are able to share that with me. It is always something that intrigues me and, you know, the S SOS secrets there, um, you know, if you will, in terms of, um, you know, how you get along and how you produce. And and I think that contributes. I'm going to talk about sound in a, in a few questions, but how that contributes to sound as well. Um, during that time, you start getting the chart action, like, you know, with the with the two EPs. Does that come as a surprise to you guys? Welcome, of course, but surprised? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Surprise is the right word. I mean, I think you're always hoping to get some sort of traction, you know, and, and you're so hoping to get positive feedback. You're hoping for um, a very grassroots fan base to come back to you, people that just genuinely find you and like you. But you, you never... You never know what to expect. I mean, I, I think I would have to imagine I've read enough interviews with huge bands, that even, you know, they, they've got massive careers and they release a record and they're still crossing their fingers going, well, I hope the people like this one. You, know, yeah. you don't know. You don't know. Yeah, no, it's, you, we, you know, I, I don't think we had a lot of expectations. It was such a weird time because we yeah. we released that EP in June at the end of June, I believe, of 2020. Mm. The first single, uh, run, uh, read them their rights had come out uh, six or eight weeks before, maybe, you know, mid late April. And, uh, and it, it started doing well pretty quick. Um, and when that happened, we were, you know, obviously like, okay, this is, this is really cool, but, we, but there was so much else going on. We didn't really get a chance to think about it other than it was like, uh, you know, are, are we going to be able to ever make music? again or at yeah. least make music together anytime soon right uh that, that was a concern so as it happened again with the next single after that and then the third single uh you know we were we were obviously very you know excited you know i would say also thankful but frankly we we're also disappointed that we couldn't go out and support it because had we been able to do that it would have been a uh, um instead of being some nice results from that i think they would have been a lot more outstanding yeah, for sure. Guys, um, we've talked a little bit about LA and at the beginning and um, you know, and we we're talking about sound here and, and contributing and you know, your experience there. I, I'm I believe that, you know, every uh, artist contributes to shaping uh, the music scene in some kind of way. Um, you know, and, and you guys are seem very positive and and you know, reinforce yourselves and through positivity. Uh, I know that the scene can be more global these days with, you know, online streaming and you kind of go, well, what's the vibe like? Because it's all so much streaming and so much online, but there's still that local area vibe that that bands bring to something. Um, what does Sons of Silver bring to shaping the music scene? And, and I I know you may not set out to shape the music scene, but in if you look at it, you say, what do you bring to shaping the music scene? Do, do you mean the music scene in L.A. or yeah. just... In a general sense. LA. Well, uh, yeah, I, I would say locally first LA, yeah. but if you have a sense of beyond LA, please share it. Well, I, I think that kind of is what it's going to be. It, it, if this is going to kind of take, LA is a weird city. There, there's a lot of music happening. There's a lot of stuff going on, but because everyone came here to make it as an actor or a musician and all that stuff, everyone's kind of peddling their own wares. So there's, there are some scenes, but you find it more like in cover things or you see like um, there's a lot of these like jam nights where all these touring professionals come out and they're doing theme nights. Mm -hmm. But, you know, bands, original bands building a scene in L.A., it, it's really it it doesn't happen all that often only because there's so much going on in the city at any given time. You know, so I, I think. And plus, not to mention the time to drive around. Like I know for me, when I come off the road, I don't go out much. 
because it's yeah. going to take me 40 minutes to get into Hollywood. I'm going to spend $20 to park and you do all this stuff. And then you're going to hang out and you're going to have a beer or two. And then you got to drive back home. So LA is a weird town in that regard. You know, I, I think that so, we're not really affecting the scene because we don't play out that much here. So Adam, yeah. if I can with you and, you know, you're, the other band that you played in Candlebox, it had roots in Seattle. Right. It, was that different? Like, is there a difference in, in Seattle to LA in terms of the music scenes? Well, yeah, I, I think, you know, there's a few layers to this. I, I think when you go back to the 80s, L.A. did have that music scene. Right. It was seen as the epicenter of what was happening in rock, right? So people went out to the clubs. Like when I when I first moved out to L.A., you would just go to a club. You didn't know who was playing. How much to get in? Oh, it was 15 bucks. Okay, let's go in and see three or four bands. <laughs> and that very shortly after I got here evolved into you had to flyer, you had to get call all your friends and family to come see your band. They showed up 10 minutes before you went on and they left the venue 10 minutes after you went home and they and the scene just went away, you know, in Seattle to that point, th that was a huge scene in the nineties. It was a long time coming, but also Seattle's a much smaller area than LA. So when you, when you look at that Seattle scene, all those guys knew each other, you know, where even in LA, even when that scene was big, yeah, you knew a lot of the same people, but still, there were so many bands that you're like, who, who the hell are those guys? I don't know them. And next thing you know, they're they're on MTV. Yeah. I, I will, I'll add that Adam is, you know, to just reinforce what Adam just said, that there really isn't a scene in L.A. anymore. Maybe, maybe there are a couple little pockets at a club or two yeah. here or there, but it's very passing. It's it's just a different world um, now. Yeah, it's very I, compartmentalized. Yeah, it may be different in, in other cities or towns, you know, anywhere around the country or the globe. Yeah. But I have a feeling it's not. It's it's just it's a different world. But but it but at the same time it is you know it's pretty f exciting. For instance, when uh, you go on and check out your your Spotify numbers right. as I do daily, yeah. and, and you'll see you know you have uh, in our case like you know six seven hundred thousand streamers in Poland, and I, I don't know how that happened. You know like from playlists and the likes of that, and then you start getting calls like, hey, are you guys opening to do some shows in Poland? So, uh, you know, um, and it's that's just a, a small example, but you know, we, we Adam and I were joking yesterday. Uh, how about you know, our, our Uzbek Uzbekistan? So, our Uzbek fan base, you know, yes. we're looking forward to, to getting over there. Actually, I would do it, you know, I, I sure, of course, I'm, I'm we're, we're Adam and I are both, you know, fairly knowledgeable, probably more than most, about you know, the uh, the peoples and the, the countries of the world and the cultures. But I must say that I know very little about Uzbekistan, so right. uh, I'm, I'm happy to go well, as long as you know, as long as it's relatively safe. It doesn't have to be perfect. I live in Los Angeles, so I'm not expecting perfection on safety. I get, I live, yeah, not far from Toronto. I get it. And so the, this this music scene has shifted a little bit online because you do have that global aspect, and you could influence sort of these online pockets. And as you're saying that, I'm thinking to myself, yeah, you know, like the PathRadio.com, like our our radio station, Germany is in the top three of our listeners. Yes. Oh, it's, yeah. Germany's our number two country. Uh, yeah. And I, I, I'm always like, I, I look at the, the, the numbers and I go, Germany. That, by the way, thank you, Germany. <laughs> but but yeah. I'm like, wow. Hello, cool. Deutschland. <laughs> yeah, I right? expect yes. Deutschland. There we go. Hey, but it, and they're, they're very passionate music fans. They always have yeah. been, especially for, for rock music and everything like that. I, I would have to say, I mean, you go to Europe, I mean, epicentered around Germany, but, but really that whole region of Europe, the, the uh, Northwestern Europe or Western Europe is very good. And in South and Central America are amazingly yeah. passionate yeah. rock fans. Yeah. 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 You guys are you guys are are calling out the things that I'm I'm seeing and feeling as well. I want to touch on this. Uh I we've talked about some other band members. Um, and you've talked about Brina on keyboards, uh, Kevin on the drums. No, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin, Kevin Holland's on guitar. Oh, guitar. Sorry, Ke uh, Kevin guitar. on guitar, uh, Mark on drums. Yeah, uh, and they've got their own experiences with some other bands as as well. What brings all you guys? I, and it, you all live in LA, maybe like I heard earlier, but is that what brought you together, or were there other forces or other elements that you got? Hey, let's let's get a band going. Well, the, you know, I'll I'll start that and let Adam finish it. But basically, Adam and I were in a, a band called Last December a number of years ago, and that that yeah. that yeah. band did really well in the LA scene. Uh, it got really popular on, on, on a bunch of TV shows with music placements. We did very well there. And then we got gobbled up, chewed up and spit out by the, the major label system over a few years, completely 
decimated and demoralized us. But nonetheless, we stayed in the business. I moved on to producing, being in the studio. Adam moved on to more of playing live, but also studio work, if I may speak for you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, in that process, I met Brina. Uh, Brina became my engineer and I started writing some songs. Adam and I continued to work together on different projects, but more in the studio. And I, you know, decided that though I wanted to play some songs again live. So I started going out by myself. I was bored, bought Brina, I was still bored. So then I called up Adam to help build a band and I'll let him take it from there because he's really the one who put the band together. Well, yeah, and I mean, really it's just, I think the best way to do it is through people you know, through word of mouth. I mean, I, I've never in my career been really good at like putting out ads in a magazine or reading ads in the magazine for players wanted this and that. You can do it. And I know there's certain people that had successes, but I find nine times out of 10, it's like, hey man, so-and-so needs this in their band. I think you'd be perfect for it. So it, it came together very naturally. I mean, you know, we, um, you know, we started doing this, you know, uh, uh, Peter was saying, hey, well, let's, let's get a full band out of it. Um, I was playing with uh, our, our original drummer, Dave, uh, Cruz and we were in a bunch of projects together. He and I had worked, and I'm like, Dave would be great for this. He came in. Um, we, you know, eventually he brought in, he knew uh, Kevin through a bands he had played in with. So it was just like that, just very, very natural flow. And then Mark came in through uh, a mix engineer we knew. So everyone was kind of like, hey, I know what you're doing. I dig what you're doing. I know a guy that will be great for that. Mm -hmm. And I, if you're around people that you trust, when they say, hey, this guy would be good, they're probably going to be right. You know, yeah. more often than not. We're, yeah. we're like, like, like finds more. like. What's that, Peter? Like finds like. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Word of, word of mouth and relationships, uh, you know, dependency on relationship building and, and some history there. Of um, course. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you guys found uh, uh, a great group. I, I'm interested in, in another uh, part of the group, and, and that's uh, Brina. Um, does she bring a different element to the band, um, you know, and, and the sound being the only female member? Or do the band dynamics change at all? She she's the only uh, daughter in Sons of Silver, so yes, yes that affects it. exactly. Well, yeah. she, she's she's you know effectively she was the first band member in the sense that I I I dragged her into all this nonsense. She was she started out as an audio engineer, and uh, now she she played music as a kid. She grew up in a very yeah. musical family. Her father played guitar, and and you know, and her mom's an artist. Uh, always a lot of music, so she you know learned to play piano and and singing classes as a kid. Uh, but but she had never really had aspired to be in a band. Um, and, uh, you know, but once she, I'll say that once she got the live bug, she was really into it. And then and, and it's especially uh, fun for her because she, she again, she's an audio engineer and she gets to record our her own band, our own band. And it's uh, you know, it's 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 a really good learning experience and process because you get to be really hands on with something that's that's not it's it's of your making but also separate because you know for instance when we're working up songs she's in the control room which is the for those who don't know that's the the room with the mixing console and the speakers and the likes while the rest of us are all out in the tracking with our instruments making a lot of noise so she's hearing it all go go down she's making notes she'll chime in you know through the headphone system and tell us things she likes things she suggestions to make and uh you know and and what she brings is you know what a number of things but i'll say this it's it's great to to you know to be in a band with a bunch of cool guys but it, it, it's nice to have a lady around in the sense that it keeps it from being a locker room and none of us are anywhere remotely like that by nature but it's just it adds a certain grace a certain way of looking at things i will say sometimes you know a time i have to go like this and go okay you know <laughs> but but seriously, it's 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 a good balance, and and she's very involved in our visual end of things, and uh, you know leads the way in a lot of that stuff. So uh, you know, at least for me, I can't. For me, it's good. It's probably a little easier for everyone else than for me because since she's my wife, sometimes I'm like, <laughs> exactly. You, you guys, after a long day, go home together and still have to deal with it. Where we go home and go, whoo, done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but you know, speaking speaking of those balances and those chemistries and things, it, it's yeah. a very serendipitous thing here because uh, she stepped in and, and filled in playing keyboards in the band, yeah. but she's not a keyboardist by nature, and right. we're not a keyboard driven band either. So when we're writing these songs, I think if she was in the room trying to fit keyboard parts in, it would take the band away from what we do. So it's great that she's in there, and and being in the control room, she has a different ear. 
So while we're working on things, sometimes we'll get tunnel vision and she can step in with a great perspective and she's getting to do what she loves, which is all the engineering and that kind of stuff. So it, it's a really interesting flow. The other nice thing is we don't have an, an outside engineer, producer, anything. It's just the five of us. So it keeps things really simple and we don't have to worry about, oh, well, who are we going to use for this next record? No, it's just us. We just come yeah. back and work. Yeah. That, and that, uh, that's also, uh, it's a very, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it, it builds a lot of confidence. In fact, sometimes it's, we just overlook it. You know, we, it's, we don't sit around and go, oh, who's going to produce our next track or tracks? Uh, you know, we, we just, we're just going to yeah. do it. We're going to go into the yeah. studio and do it ourselves. And the only debate will be, you know, who do we want to mix it? If we're not going to mix it ourselves, maybe Brina would mix something. Maybe, maybe Adam would mix something. But in this case, now we've, we stumble onto, uh, two great, great, uh, mixing producers and in John Fields, who, who again, mixed our, our last EP ordinary sex appeal. And then our current EP, Tim Palmer, who not only, um, mixed it, but he also contributed some guitar parts, some additional oh, nice. background vocals and, and some yeah. keys, keyboard stuff. And, mm -hmm. So we feel like we have that all, we, we have our team really, you know, built out, which is, it's. Yeah, we're, we're very fortunate. Yeah. Very well, fortunate. I, it's, it sounds like Brina brings that, you know, some organic, organic discipline, if you will, uh, and, and some other elements that, um, you know, contribute to the sound. And I want to say March 8th is International Women's Day. So uh, hats off to, to Brina as we acknowledge yes, that right. and celebrate her talents, contributions and inspiration, I bet, to all the yeah. girls out there who are going to hear this. Well, I'll, t I'll definitely make sure. Hey, yeah. I'll make sure to mention that. But in fact, I did buy flowers for her today. Perfect. So there you go. Well, Hold off till tomorrow. He, he asked me to buy the flowers, but I still bought them. Um, <laughs> don't give them to her till tomorrow <laughs> international women's day that's that it's it's awesome so i thought we would throw that in there um look and we were talking about sound and other things so everyone comes in with some history from other bands um how do you create the sons of silver sound and how do you create it and not sound like the other bands um and you know adam i'm not picking on you or anything like but I, I, with the with the candle box thing you know i I think you guys did something late in 2023. How do you separate it? How do you come up with your, like, how do you not make it sound like everything else that you've worked on? Like uh, all the contributing members have worked on somewhere else. I, I, and this sounds like a, a, a cheap out answer by, eh. by not thinking about it, by not thinking about it. When we come in um, e each situation and each song um, I don't think we're trying to impose a particular thing like like the, the the sound that we've come up with for Sons of Silver, I don't think was necessarily a blueprint from the beginning. It was just we want to do things in this kind of an area. So everyone comes in and everyone does what they do naturally. And that's the sound you end up with. It becomes difficult when you start making people play and, and do things that's that aren't natural to them. Right. Sometimes you can expand and you get into it, but I think the best thing is when people come in and just do what they do and do who they are, you know, be who they are. And I think that, you know, as far as like more specific to that question, if I'm working with Candlebox or another band, it is a different sound and it's different songs and it's a different approach. And for each of us as musicians, your, your greatest asset at that point is the best you can recognize what's needed at this moment versus what you want to do necessarily. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. No, you I don't want to, you don't want to try to impose and change something. You have to recognize, Oh, yeah. this is what's developing here. And I know that if I do this, it's going to help this develop in that style or that, that particular thing as best you can. You know, I, you know what? I get it. I get it. And uh, I equate it to, I remember uh, talking to um, uh, actors uh, and, and the advice they gave was, uh, and I can relate to this. Maybe you can too. Uh, they they don't act from here; they act from here. And because yes. and, they say when they act from here, they get a product that that isn't yep. isn't what it's supposed to be, or at that time. And you said it at that time; it isn't what it's supposed to be. And yeah. I guess if you're all doing that at the same time, maybe that's what it is, right? You're coming together. You're all coming together in that essence. And that's for sure, yeah. for sure. And I and I think that that you, especially if you're working in a group situation, everyone's in there. It, it, you have to be reactive. You yeah, know, that's, the, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. If somebody plays something different. It changes what I do. I'm not going to hammer in some idea I have. If the idea is moving in a new direction, I'm going to adapt to that. And we all do that. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, you know, that that's the key word I was going to bring up, but but you got to it, and and I'll, you know, and, and again, chemistry is very key here. It's, it's it's and and also just for us, the, the you know, not for us, but for I think a lot of artists, uh, the the music kind of leads the way. So we're we're all being ourselves. No one's trying to be some someone they're not. At the right. same time, we're all trying to push ourselves and grow as musicians. And we also we're, we're working within the limits of what you know what we're trying to do as a band you're not going to see us probably do any you know. Uh, metal songs it's just not in our not in our wheelhouse and you're not going to see us do probably uh, any polka songs, you know, <laughs> uh, maybe waltz. <laughs> but uh, no, seriously. So we we kind of it's not that and, and these these boundaries are natural. I mean, if something happened, we're just going to go with it. So you mm -hmm. never know. But um, when you add it all up, though, I would say the last thing is, is our taste levels are are very similar. Uh, our our what we aspire to do musically and the and the, the the quality level is is similar. And and we're also we're not we're not afraid to to explore like you know we mentioned, but we're also not afraid to let go. And I think that's one of the key things is when you're when you're working on working together and uh, and, and you know you're always going to hit bumps in the road with a song even the the smoothest of writing processes you're going to hit some bumps and 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 a lot of times that requires just letting go be it for a moment for a day a week maybe a few months maybe a year you got to step back and not beat something up and 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 it's very easy to to not do that to get just grip it and just not let go and especially it could be one person in the band who won't let go and it could slow down everything because maybe right behind you is this this mile long train of of other opportunities and and you're you're beating yourself up for no reason so there's a confidence saying i'm gonna I'm stash this away come back a different day and i know there's something lurking right behind me i don't know what it is but i know it's there yeah. letting it letting it breathe eh, peter yeah yeah um I, with some hesitation, I'm going to ask you this question and I don't mean to offend anybody, but sometimes I do. And it's, it's around comparisons. Um, you obviously all have some musical influences, right? Like, because, you know, you grew up in a, in a certain era or you, you like the particular uh, bass player or guitarist, a singer, et cetera. Um, do you, does Sons of Silver draw comparisons to any other bands? And I mean, does it bother you that you draw comparisons to any other bands or? Hmm. Uh, you know, have you heard any, Adam? I, I haven't really heard any. And, you know, specifically, no, I don't hear like anything coming up. I remember when we did, uh, when Doomsday Noises came out, there was, you, know, you get the people online that all throw in their little comments. And I remember someone was <laughs> like, oh, it just sounds like a derivative of all the bands they came from and everything. I'm like, and <laughs> yeah of course i, mean, I remember I that i was like anything but and not that i would take offense to that by any means i just didn't hear it you know but we're, we we all have our influences and they come out and i think um i i, I don't get a, i wouldn't get offended i don't i don't really hear a lot of consistent ones but the thing is it we don't try to emulate anything in particular and we don't try to avoid emulating anything in particular unless it's actually a, it's like you can't do that that melody was in this song you can't. <laughs> but as far as a style or a sound yeah. of a band or somebody does we don't really care because the, the 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 formula we've come up with is do we like this and if we like this that's the end of the questioning you know yeah. we don't worry about yeah. if we're doing something or not so i don't know maybe more things will come out i mean i'm sure if We've heard a couple of things, but I'm not hearing like a repetitive thing over and over. Do, do you have something in mind, Guido? None. I, so here's the weird thing. It's funny you, you, you're you calling it out because a lot of times you'll be like, oh, yeah, these guys sound like that guy or that guy. And I'm thinking, I listen to you guys and I'm like, sounds like Sons of Silver. And, and I don't have a comparison for you. And I was like, I wonder, I wonder if they've heard any comparisons or if, you know, because they have any musical influences that they've heard comparisons. So um, we're on par, Peter. Sure, I, I appreciate that. I mean, yeah. I would say the only thing that we get tagged with now, and if we're not alone in this, is just people try to, people in the industry in particular, try to, um, I don't not stratify you, but they try to identify you with a, a, a another group of our somewhat similar artists. Yeah. So we're getting, you know, bounced around with what's called, for instance, uh, neo classic rock or new wave of classic rock. Yeah. But then we've heard others discount that. So so Re retro yes. retro progressive like yeah there's some weird yeah. there's some weird labels coming out so i'll be honest the other thing i did was you know looking at the guys in the group 
looking at the band members i went and i go okay they, they play in these bands and, and adam you guys are really on key tonight you're killing me but i went and listened to some of the other stuff and i'm like yeah yeah okay but not really but yeah but not really <laughs> so right right you had your elements because of who you are and the instruments that you play but i can't say that you explicitly sounded like this other these you know the the whole sum of the other bands that the members were previously from and and so that's that's where the 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 question was born from peter so um listen you you talked about tim palmer um your new album runaway emotions is self-produced mixed by tim palmer yes yeah. Yeah. and, and uh the credit like his you know to his credit he's got some like you know robert plant david bowie u2 etc what does tim's mix bring to this album for you guys like what is the you know what is the foundation what's the element that he brings that that makes us go cool man <laughs> let me think about that now like he, he you know he just he's a, he was a great finisher and what i mean by that is we we put all our ideas down in a very coherent way and uh with very high quality coherent way and and he pulled it all together in a way that not only was it professional sounding from a technical standpoint but also emotionally satisfying and emotionally he lifted the tracks to a new level by the way he featured certain instruments the way he shaped their tones and also in the little things he added and i don't say say little to minimize them i say it in the sense that they were they're more subtle but uh for instance he would add a background vocal on a part or he'd asked me to re, you know to to sing something to add a background vocal where we didn't have one uh and how he would tuck it in there how he would for instance let's say on a song like our, our first single here tell me this the way he shaped uh brina's uh or brina and kevin's background vocals the tone yeah. the the uh the, the eq the the echo that's on there that was not something we had envisioned it slightly differently differently and the way he put it together was great the way he shaped the bass in that song and tell me this again uh to, you know adam's got this, yeah. this uh in the chorus is a very moving pumping bass line with, but he's playing with fingers so those who aren't familiar that can often not cut out as much but he managed to make it work uh where it it, it jumps out in the mix but it still has a warmth to it um we've actually gotten a number of comments on that and i was really happy to hear that from from not just you know regular listeners but also from from uh of industry folks as well as from um, you know um, other mastering and mixing and mastering engineers so he brought he brought a lot of intang intangibles and, and experience that just elevated it to new, to a new level and and not only does it make it great for this for this album but it gives us something to aspire to and to surpass for what we we have coming and uh and and that's that's really uh it's, he set a really high bar for us, helped us to set a really high bar for ourselves. And it's, that's, that's fun. It's, it feels really good because this is something that could, could live for quite a while. Well, shout out, shout out to Tim, because we're, we're looking forward to hearing some of the, the details that, um, you know, he helped bring out in you guys as well. Um, when do we get our hands on, on the new album? We don't know. <laughs> no, you know, honestly, we, we were expecting originally uh, a, June release of the album and now we're just saying summer of 2024 and okay. simply as we're getting a lot of uh we're, we're getting a lot of mileage out of this first single and we know that's going to happen with at least the next two or three singles so we may go three four singles deep uh before the album comes out so it's it's possible it won't even be a summer release I know I probably shouldn't yeah. be saying that anyone in the industry who's listening to that will be very upset with me but it's the reality of the situation and it doesn't mean we're not going to be releasing new new tracks it means they're they're going to be coming out one after the other and uh with a lot of uh content behind them from music videos to lyric videos to live videos behind the scenes footage yeah. and then you know and we expect we'll be on the road then to support these and and uh then drop the album hmm. uh so it's, you get it's, you get me excited Slightly yeah. unknown, but 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 for for only for the best of of reasons. Exactly, the, the industry's changed so much that you know you you have to think about how you present and release things because um, it, with with 
so many people g getting things online and the internet and attention spans are so much coming at you. Um, if you just drop a record and walk away, it's forgotten about, you know? Yeah. So by releasing these things and putting videos with them, you, you've got a stream of things coming out and, and hopefully you keep people's attention over a, a longer period of time. And then the record comes out and people kind of already know half the record. So they're already embracing it, but you know, you, it's always a work in progress to figure out how's, yeah. what's the best way to handle getting your music out to people. Yeah. And, and, and that's very true. So it's, it's always a work in progress. And, it, and I will say this from my end, uh, overseeing a lot of that stuff over the last few years, uh, just by my nature, I'm always trying to figure out a sort of an MO to it, you know, a certain workflow. And yes, we, we, we have certain things we do on a consistent basis, but what I've, I've accepted is that it's just a constantly changing environment and we have to adapt on a re regular basis, be nimble and, and not try to do too much uh, in the sense of where we could we spread ourselves thin not, not only uh, yeah. physically but also just time wise so and, and and then within that do really quality stuff stuff that can stand the test of time and and the last thing I'll add is that you know when in a, in, a, in our situation where we're still a new band far more people don't know us than know us one of the ways one of the things we have to remember is it, it people may not latch on the first second third fourth fifth tenth try sorry it's a <laughs> alarm for my, it's, for my son. Uh, it's um you know they may it may take several tries over a, a, you know could be several months could be a year or two to for people to really discover us or, or latch on to us if they've discovered us you know i i find that even with myself so so if you try to ram something down someone's throat in all in one week or you know one month you, you're going to miss a lot of folks and yeah. likewise you have to just stay present to, so that you know to give people that time to discover you i mean i'll say this like i was watching a lot of, with you two over the, the band you two over the last uh year how they were promoting <clears throat> their sphere show yeah and and it really it caught me how here in particular with with bono and the edge here are these guys who have nothing to prove whatsoever, uh, who've been doing this for coming up on 50 years, uh, pretty relentlessly. Yeah. And here they are still promoting to the nth degree, day in, day out. And I don't mean just, you know, where they're passing the torch and someone else is, you know, you know running an advertising campaign for them, where they're, they're, they're doing it on social media, uh, you mm -hmm. know, uh, mass media, uh, traditional media in that sense, um, they're, they're having giveaways of tickets, giveaways of merch, whatever it takes, uh, they're, they're doing it. And, and I'm like, well, if those guys are doing it, we have no excuse not to do it. And, uh, and, and that's, that's just the name of the game. And if, if you don't like it, you know, fine, don't do it, yeah. but expect results accordingly. I, it is, this is a great answer to when is the new album coming? When do we get our hands on the new album? Because I think you're actually in touch. Uh, you're in touch with what's going on online and what the scene is like. You know, I, I used the term earlier, let it breathe. And I think that you just, you know, you, 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 you fix the term, let it breathe, let it breathe the right amount is what I heard, which is mm -hmm. we're going to listen to our fans. We're going to, you know, release the songs. And and you're gonna get to enjoy Sons of Silver, and when the time is right, you're gonna get the whole package out there, and uh, hopefully we'll get it in different formats. Uh, you know, like not just digital. Maybe we'll will we see some vinyl. Maybe I know that's a popular yes. thing these days. So the, art, the artwork is made. It's just Woo! waiting. <laughs> yeah. well, okay, and, and so to, I was gonna say at that point we even even as recent as six months ago we were still yeah. giving some debate of do we do this as a full length record or yeah. do we split this into two EPs. Yeah. Oh, give me a full length record, please. Yeah, no, we, we, that's where we're going. <laughs> we, we decided we're going. that. Yeah. That's, I, uh, the, the old guy in me, like, you know, I still love the full length. Like, I, I, yeah. I know why we do the EPs and the singles. I get it. I really do. But man, I just love having that full length record still. Hey, no, no, they're they're coming back I mean, from what from what I'm hearing, not just yeah. through you know, industry folks, but also just talking to fam family, friends and the yeah. likes. Uh, is that everyone's wanting uh, at all ages and all experiences are, are, are there's a kind of a yearning for full lengths to really get into an artist on a, on a deeper level, not just be, you know, skirting the surface of a bunch of singles from different artists, which is great too. We all do yeah. that, but 
but within that there's you know a sense that like okay i've tasted a bunch of these you know uh appetizers i i'd like to go deep with one or two right. of them and my son who's three years old he this he's doing it every morning this morning he wakes up and he wants to instantly go in our back room where we have it's just like his playroom mm -hmm. slash music room and we he he flips up you know flips on our stereo system turns the awesome. our, our vinyl player on he puts on the, the vinyl album himself and he he puts it to the side he wants and and turns it on and goes and i said well do you want to just flip it on you know our sono system yeah. he goes no yeah. i want the record player papa okay yeah. there you go roll with it roll with it yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. no man that's awesome i i love you know what it is i think and i can i don't mind piecing together the story but when you get the full the full album you hear the story like you hear the you know yes. you hear the arrangement you hear the story and i i sometimes miss you know, having the eight or nine or 10 songs and just listening through them and, and you get the whole story, you get the arc of, of the, you know, the songs and how they kind of roll into each other. And anyways, I'm probably dating myself a little bit when I start talking about that stuff. Tell me this. Oh, there's uh, some foreshadowing on uh, you're going to have uh, the, the, the new single. Tell me this. Look, this this song isn't something that I, I was like, th this wasn't written on the back of a napkin in 15 minutes, man. It, it you have some, it's got some miles. There, there's been a journey with the song. Um, it, you know, it's the first song I think that you were going to make it on the new album. Can you share some insights on the journey of the song itself or? No, just kidding. That's, yeah. that's <laughs> what I get for, uh, you know, asking a close ended <laughs> question, folks. That's Look right. About business here, not just music. <laughs> yeah, of course. What, what would you like to know? Tell me, tell me how this thing started. And I mean, it's not something you wrote like, you know, three months ago, right? You didn't start that. No, way. no, it's, it's, uh, well, I'll, I'll, I'll start this one off. And Adam, <laughs> you know, we, we were always tag teaming on this. So you're not hearing just yeah. one voice or one opinion. But this, this song, it began, uh, its first inspiration was just a, a bedroom riff actually uh, that I came up with uh, standing in front of the TV. Actually, I just sit there and practice, you know, and uh, I brought it to the band and we started running with it and we took it, you know, to a, to a certain place where we felt it was time to shelve it for a bit as we were sort of discussing earlier. And uh, when Mark Slutsky joined the band, uh, you know, he, he brought a lot of new energy and as well as a slightly different uh, take on 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 our approach in, in a very very uh, yeah. positive way and so so i brought it back to the band and I'll, I'll, adam you pick it up from there yeah i mean that's pretty much it. it it's just it was counter to how most of our songs together because most of our songs come together we catch fire with an idea and we finish it up pretty much right then and there at least musically and peter will have a couple of key lines and a melody or something and then he'll work refine those parts but this one he had that riff and we played with it and we dug the riff but we just we kept coming to this conclusion of it's really cool but we don't have a song yet like we we didn't I, the other day i was just saying that it's like the, the analogy kind of like was we found this really cool diamond but we didn't have the setting for it <laughs> so so every time we'd pull that riff out and play that opening riff we'd be like that's really cool okay what do we do with it so it did it just took a few times of us kicking it around and one day you pull it out of, off the shelf and you you try out that riff and you go okay i got a cool idea now let's try this here and then it all came together and once we got it and then even after that this was one of the harder ones for peter to come up with lyrics to he he had to really put some sweat and time into it Usually they come pretty easy for us, but this one was a slower, uh, slower build for whatever reason. Yeah, yeah, that, that, it, indeed it was. But you know, we stuck with it. I mean, that's that's uh, frankly that's where experience comes in. You 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 kind of mm -hmm. just know when to hold them, know when to fold them, so to speak. <laughs> and uh, and and we knew to keep playing, playing our hand on this one, and it, it took some time. And and it wasn't really blood and or sweat and tears for me with this song lyrically. It was more like banging my head on the wall and stabbing myself. In the eye with the pencil that was why, nearby. Why, so why? Because you were trying to figure out which which direction to take it lyrically, or uh, no? It was it was it was yes and no. I was really just I was unwilling to let go of what was not working. So when we were talking <laughs> about you know earlier how you have to sometimes know when to let go and move on. Well, I just wasn't willing to do that, and I knew better. And once I accepted it, then it literally took me a matter of minutes to finish the lyrics to the song. 
and 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 what was the kicker that made me do it was that I needed or we needed to finish the song. We had days to go because uh, we 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 have we don't have official deadlines, but we do have self self imposed deadlines. Otherwise, we could be in in the studio endlessly, and and that wouldn't be good in any way whatsoever. So so it was like okay, we have five days to get this done. We're shipping it out for mixing, or it's not going to go out. So okay, well, Peter you know, uh, look in the mirror and accept the fact that what you want is not what you're going to get, but what you're being given by the song is quite nice. Roll with it and, and accept it. And I did. And then I had a couple of drinks. Yeah, it, it, it's really hard to back yourself out of something that you've, you've, uh, you feel has some value to it, but it's not quite there because you yeah. don't want to abandon it because you have that value. It, it's kind of the same thing. Like, like if I'm going to go into the studio and work with somebody um, and people will say, "What well, do you want me to send you the music? Nope. Because yeah. if you send me the music, I'm probably not going to listen to it. And if I do listen to it, I'm going to start to come up with ideas to the demo. And then I'm going to come in with preconceived ideas. And I'm going to have to let go of those if they don't work, which inevitably they probably won't because it's going to be new. So it's it, once you it, unlearn something to let go of a, of a concept or an idea you have is not I'm not saying it's it's that difficult and you can't do it, but it's it's a way easier to come in fresh and go with your first instinct on something. Yeah. And unfortunately, he was past that point. His first instinct, he was still fighting. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah. I, we I, take we take ownership of it, right? You have that ownership, or you have yeah. you build a relationship with the idea, right? Well, also you invest time in it. So maybe yeah. you, you know, I spent a, a half day or a day or you know pieces of days working on the lyrics and I got something that was pretty complete and I don't want to let go of it, but a turd's a turd. Sometimes you just need yeah. to, you know, box it up and ship it off. Or I, I guess you wouldn't ship off a turd to someone, but you know, throw it in the trash. Depends on who it is. <laughs> yeah. So, but, but that, that's what it really is. And I, I knew better. I, I just knew better. I was just clinging to, to a fantasy and, you know, it's like a fool. No, but you know, and I said like, you know, I, look, there are songs that they just kind of, write them i don't want to say write themselves because you demean the song but but they, they just don't take up as much time you know lyrically yeah. musically and then there's these these other ones that we <clears throat> labor or nurture we nurture them right we nurture mm -hmm. them. and i think that's the story that i was trying to get at behind tell me this is that there was some nurturing going on here is there a is there a did you do a video already for it or or a music lyric? video yeah yeah, it's out. It's been out for a couple of weeks. Where have you been? And that's on. I'm, I'm, you're, I'm leading you here. I'm leading you here. So there's a site, sonsofsilver.com, right? That's right. right. I've been on the site, Peter. <laughs> so, yes. Um, I yeah, hope it's on there. You've got some great links uh, and you got video and you got other content. And the question I wanted to ask is, I know I'm going to sonsofsilver.com. Uh, but is that the is that where you want folks to go to? I know artists have Facebook, Insta, Twitter, like all these other things. Um, it, to me, they're all overwhelming sometimes when we have like five different channels, and you. everybody Oof. consumes them, right? But but uh, is that is sunsilver.com the the place to go first? No, no. I, I, I frankly, I wouldn't say there's any place to go first. I would go wherever you uh, you're most comfortable, wh whatever works for you as as a person. I mean. You can start by just searching Sons of Silver and, and uh, you know, you'll see all our, our, our you know, socials pop up, our website, the likes of that, um, the streaming services from, from Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, et cetera. They'll all pop up. Uh, YouTube obviously will pop up, you know, in, in, all within that first page or so. Uh, and, and they're all pretty well maintained. Our, our bread and butter is Facebook. Facebook for sure, as, in, as well as as well as YouTube, um, but but Facebook's our bread and butter. Our website is is frankly pretty minimalistic because people just don't visit it that much. People go to the one of those main social media places first, and and I'll add to that just to be straight up about it. Instagram isn't really even one of our main forums as well. We 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 post everything on there, and and you know we we get our replies, but Facebook, you know, we, I think we have close to a quarter million followers. And that's it's been pretty and it's steadily growing. It's been just very natural for us. So several avenues that they can go to at their at their discretion and choice. Facebook is uh, one of your your mainstays for you. Look, I uh, I apologize. I 
went way over time talking to you guys and i'm sorry for that um but we're on the clock don't worry about it i've had a good time doing it is there anything else you want to leave us with before i you go man guido shut up already but um yeah i need to know this has been this has been great guido you we we i i don't know i can't speak for adam but but uh he has his own a mind of his own, but uh, I, I've really enjoyed this. Seriously, I right on, right on. it's been a great conversation. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was going to say something funny, like I hate all you guys, and I'm sending a hit squad to each of your homes, but <laughs> it just seemed too forced. No, it's been fun. It's been a good time. <laughs> all right. I'll let the family know that is Peter Ariopoulos <laughs> and Adam Curry of the Sons of Silver Band. And we've had some re-education with you here on the show as uh, we see them start to set the world on fire. So don't hesitate. Head on over to sonsofsilver.com or their Facebook site and join them in the Who's Gonna Stop Us outbreak as we ask together, tell me this. I'll have all the links in the show notes so you can catch all their songs, videos, and content. Plus, you can catch them on thepathradio.com. Thank you, Peter. Thank you, Adam. Hope we catch up again and take care. You too. Look forward to talking again. Thank you.